Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be going over a Bloody Queen match. I realized I haven't posted like a guide on Bloody Queen in a while. Even though I did like a BQ video a while ago, it still wasn't really necessarily the same thing as like a guide, so I'll just be posting one instead. A couple seasons ago, I decided to just play Bloody Queen and main her, mostly because she was on my bucket list when I first joined as far as hunters that I wanted to improve with overall. I do enjoy playing Bloody Queen, I think she's still a really good hunter. And I was surprised that when I was climbing up with her on the rank leader boards, when I got S badge with her, it was nice because it. I still consider her to be like one of my more weaker hunters. So when I had gotten top 10 with her, it was just really nice because I feel like I actually put in like a lot of work into her over the course of like many seasons of having this game. And to honestly not really struggle a whole lot while I was climbing up with her, it was just real nice because I remember how frustrating it was to constantly be missing my mirrors and just have horrible death perception, um, mostly just getting a lot of ties, not trying or not being um, aware of what I was doing wrong, and to just get that both, I think out of all the S badges that I've got, with besides my son, of course, I think Bloody Queen and Wu Chang are probably the two hunters that I'm most proud of for accomplishing, just because they both were really, they were meaningful to me in different ways, and I'm just, I was just so glad that I was able to finally get them. But anyway, as far as BQ goes, her builds that i have for her are pretty much always going to be the same i never really change it even now i've still managed to kind of have the same build forever i always run detention i always run trump card just because the other two perks don't really do anything with her can find you don't really need it because again her mirrors can go through walls and objects so there's no point in blocking window and then with insolence insolence doesn't really do anything as far as her presence goes so it's kind of just more of a wasted trait if you go that route trump card is the best mostly just because you can have blink and then you can either switch it to teleport at normal if you decide to bring warp you basically get like it's the equivalent of like a second mirror except you you can like move yourself rather than projecting your mirror and it works out because if you like warp from the chair you can cut somebody off and then mirror back to the chair or uh, vice versa you know you can just wait go back through the warp if you see them if you go back through the portal and if you see them coming to the chair still or if you see them running away you can then use your mirror to pressure if you're dealing with someone trying to force seal and if it's like a last cipher situation you can trump card switch to patroller and get them off the four ceiling it's saved me many times turn some of my ties into wins and turn some of my losses into ties it's still really helpful i always bring wanted just because it's nice to kind of just see where everyone's coming from and since with bloody queen you have your mirror you're able to pressure pretty much from anywhere on the map as long as you get within range there isn't really anything stopping you from just trying to put oh or like apply pressure to someone if they have flywheel or if you can't really get a hit that's fine you're still just slowing them down just because you're forcing them to move or run away and then i of course also have oh they changed it they changed it to sadist i just realized okay wow so let me get this straight so they the new trait that they called control freak they left it as Control Freak, and the old trait, the original Control Freak, they changed the original name. That's dumb. Dude, they don't play their game. So, say this now. I kind of like how that sounds, but I don't agree with them changing the original one. Anyway, so, with Sadist, you can speed up the chair countdown, and I bring this on most of my hunters just because I like applying more pressure into my matches so by having this trade on it forces someone to get off their cypher earlier and to basically save a little earlier too since they don't really have a whole lot of time to like drag out the save and with bloody queen as far as bans go i always 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 ban mercenary and seer mostly just because with priestess i don't really have to worry about her too much since again i have my mirror ability i can go through walls and i can also go to the opposite side of the map if i need to i ban mercenary just because he still is the only survivor that's able to take like a terror shock and not be like affected by it a whole lot in the sense where like he won't go down immediately and he can still get the save off if i'm trying to prevent someone from saving altogether or if i want to make sure that i can at least if i am able to get a terror shock i want that person to still go down immediately and not save at all so by having mercenary in the game not only do i allow someone to kind of quickly go across the map with his double pads but i also allow someone to potentially still manage to get a rescue off if he's not already injured and manages to get hit even if I Terra Shock him and do the double damage, he still won't go down and he'll be able to get that save off. Sure, he'll go down after he saves, but I'm trying to eliminate that save altogether or at least ensure that that person gets rescued after half. So banning Mercenary just gives me that opportunity to do so. Anyway, enough of my yapping. We'll just go ahead and go into the match. So here I'm on Moonlit. I have Weeping, Little Girl, Batter, and Antiquarian. 
Or I spawn, I picked right here when we got to pick our spawns, so I'm going straight for the Antiquin, just because she's in kind of a rough area, and with my mirror ability, I don't really have to worry about messing it up a whole lot, just because I wait until they get to position, and then here, I'm able to just kind of hit. It takes me a second to realign, because again, death perception is everything, so once I just align myself and quick my and like fix my position, then I'm able to get in another hit. Here she kind of walks up to the side, just trying to get away out of a bad area. I don't really have to follow her, like, to be right behind her, I just have to kind of wait and be a little bit patient. So I see where she's coming from. I'm mostly just waiting for my mirror, and I'm going to try and force her to walk towards me. That way I can just get in a hit. And then here, I'm not afraid to walk through pallets. Here she just goes ahead and stuns me. So I'm just forced to wait the 10 second cooldown. 7, 6, 5. And again, because she, she knows what I'm wanting to do. So I'm just trying to like walk around. And then I put my mirror. Make her get close to me. She uses her flywheel, but she's out of stun ability. So I don't swing her away because I'm expecting her to jump after she used that flywheel. So now I just go ahead and whack her. And here she's already down to about three, she used up three fourths of her ability already, so she only really has enough for, I want to say like two stuns. I do get one in order on the weeping, but I do remember we're better spawned and I see that his cypher isn't moving, so I already leave to try and kind of cut him off. Because I have a general idea of where he's coming from, but since I don't have one in order on him, I don't really have line of sight. So I kind of just have to assume he's going the long way around. And of course I'm right, I just don't really do anything right away. And he's already, since he is kind of taking the long way around, I just have to position myself. To be like right here to where his balls won't really affect me now the thing about this what i'm doing i'm intentionally staying like right here and i'm not trying to leave because i don't want him to use his ball to knock me like far away from the chair because i still want to be within range to hit him that way i can either make sure that it's not a free rescue or if he waits too long i can just get a terror shock so that's why i'm mostly just kind of camping around here by this object so he can't like push me away and then of course he waits too long so I'm able to get the Terror Shock just as he came pretty late. Again, it's another reason why I banned Mercenaries so I can do stuff like this a little bit more easier. I know my timings of the chair count out pretty well when I have Sadist active. So it really is just dependent on who I have in the match that's able to come save. And if it's a Mercenary, sure, I might still be able to get Terror Shock, but they'll still be able to get the Rescue off. And I'm trying to avoid that altogether. So here I put out my mirror just to see if anybody else is coming. To save batter, I go ahead and leave to cut off the weeping because I have a good idea of where he's coming from. Here, I missed this hit, and then again, I wasn't just expecting him to like run away or to like turn back. I thought he was just going to commit to the direction. So I go ahead and hit him, and then I see little girl coming. So I decide to mirror on the weeping. I assume he had flywheel, um, but he doesn't. I ended up just missing my mirror, and so then I try to catch up to little girl and pressure her. Unfortunately, she you, she has like all of her pages, so she just puts them down as like much as she can, just so she can keep getting distance between me, as well as just putting herself closer to the chair. Even though I have status activated, because of her page abilities, as well as just pushing me away, she makes me go out of range to where I can't hit her or attack her, so it's a little unfortunate here. And then here, I think Batter took her off. I was just going to blink on him, but because Batter took her off, I didn't think she'd still try to body block. So, that's alright. And uh, then here, I know he has flywheel, so I don't swing. But unfortunately, where he was walking, I wasn't able to kind of just be relative to, like, relatively close to him. So he able he is able to get away. Dude, I cannot talk. And then I kind of just wait. I circle around these pallets for a minute before I'm able to kind of catch up to him. Again, just kind of eat a pallet, but it's fine. My mirror's back up. No problem. I just wait for it. He doesn't really have anywhere to go, and he already used his flywheel, so he's pretty much just dead. I don't really struggle with using my mirrors a whole lot anymore. It mostly just depends on if my if I just get my depth perception wrong. I will say though, I don't know if this is just a me thing or if this goes for anybody else, but for whatever reason, I have so much more of a harder time playing her on Lakeside. Like any other map, even Hospital, any other map, I'm fine. But on the Lakeside match, I don't know why, I just can't fucking play her properly. I really don't know why. So anyway, I know they're both still injured. Weeping's just gonna get away. I make my mirror a little bit closer to him, and then here he doesn't see me, because I put my mirror just like through tent, and I guess he just wasn't aware that it was going next to him. I think he thought I was going to go to the little girl. So after I cheer him, I have like a pretty good idea of where she goes, so I switch over to here, and then for shits and giggles, I just activate patroller, because I mean, it's the end of the match, you know, what can you do? I don't really like starting the match with patroller BQ, I've mostly treated it as like, to prevent force healing. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to. And then here she tries to push me away, but she's out of range. And then she used her flywheel because she thought that I would get out and just, she thought I was just going to bait her with the patroller, basically. So I ended up just getting her and she got mad, so they surrendered. But yeah, anyway, so that's a BQ match. Like I was saying, though, with Bloody Queen, I don't really change anything or shake anything up as far as her persona builds go. I'm still always going to run Sadis as well as Wonder Order. 
But the thing with Bloody Queen that I still feel like is also pretty important to mention, the only time I wouldn't recommend playing her is just if you're dealing with a lot of characters that can eat up hits. So like if you have, you know, if you have Seer, Perfumer, Ada, they're going to be a little bit difficult. And if you have, like, if you have one person in the match, that's fine. But if you have, like, multiple, I want to say at least, like, two or three characters, I wouldn't really recommend playing it. Just because it's going to take you a little bit longer to knock down, like, each of them. And as well as trying to build up damage, since some of them have abilities to heal each other or to just take a hit and not really be affected by it at all. Um, as far as harassers go, she pretty much counters everyone. The only real pain that has to deal with sometimes is just forward, almost because he can get away. But you are still able to pressure them from a distance. You just got to be really patient with your mirrors as well as just knowing when to strike. But yeah, anyway, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide on Bloody Queen. Good luck on your rank matches and I will talk to you all later. Bye.